What is up, XFM? You guys know how it is. Let's get going to the video because I don't want to waste any of your time. So first of all, if you're confused, yes, this is a re-upload and that's because I actually made a mistake when I was calculating some things and I think it's fair with you guys, I really respect everyone who watches my videos and I decided to delete it and re-upload, but this means I'm actually rehearsed and we're gonna have an even more complete and faster video. As you can see, season 19 is live, they are actually giving away 3000 AXS, well, I mean, giving away. If you are able to get to uh, rank 1000 up to rank 1, so PvP season 19 is live with all of the money we talked about they reset the MMR as they always do and uh, they actually did a major rebalancing patch and after seeing everything it, it was pretty major I, I, I think I can agree so they actually adjusted the formulas for both bonus damage and critical strikes as well as the skill stats effects on both uh, on bonus damage for combos before we look at the cards I think this is the most uh, this is one of the biggest changes actually so we are going to take a look on that first uh, it's kind of confusing because it, you actually have to click here instead of click here uh, like this table doesn't have the skills for whatever reason so if you want to check it out make sure you click here because uh, it actually took me a while to uh, realize that and there you go uh, so now there is a formula for determining the damage bonus on crits which means uh, you know a beast is going to crit a different damage than an aqua will even if they're hitting for the same amount of damage and there's also a formula for skill bonuses uh, I mean, th there was one before, but they actually changed it. I dislike that they don't have one here, but I will show it to you just so you understand what exactly is the difference nowadays. But let's start with the formula for determining damage bonus. So the formula here is uh, square root of morale times 10 plus morale times 0 0.4 minus 18. So let's uh, actually add this to O from alpha. All right, so what I did there is I actually used the value of morale that a beast has. So when you actually go for 61 morale uh, in this equation, what you get is 84% crits. So beasts, they actually got nerfed in the amount that they crit. So now they actually crit for 16% less damage. But the actual, you know, the big news here is not that. The big news is that other classes are going to crit for even less damage than that. And the lowest class of them all is actually Aqua. So let's take a look on how much damage the Aquas are going to do. There we go. So they actually do 44% of the damage uh, in crits. Basically, what they said is faster classes were actually creating more just because they attack first and people were perceiving that as if aquas were creating the same amount of damage as, you know, beasts or other classes and they decided to lower the, the damage. So, you know, whilst this is a 60% damage reduction on aquas, beasts got only hit with an 18% uh, or 16% get reduction. Which is fine to me, I don't think this really nerfs Aquas as much as people think it does because in general they, they were not winning games because of their crits, they were winning games because of their skill and because of their fat, you know, because they're tanky and they uh, had really good speed. So yeah, bugs do pretty much the same amount of beasts and then after bugs there's a huge plateau, there's a huge decrease, plants and birds and reptiles are gonna do much, much less damage. So that's pretty interesting. Now, I think an even bigger change is actually the formula to skills. The way skill used to work is like this. Let's say you're using two cards that do 100 damage. So usually, you know, if there's no class, uh, nothing, you would do 200 damage. But it's not how it works exactly. So basically what you have to do is you need to find your value for a uh, skill, which is 35 if you're an Aqua. Then you would go with 100, which is your damage card times 35 and then you would divide this by 500 and that is the bonus damage you were going to do with that card and since you had another 100 damage card uh, you would have to do the same thing which is this which means your 200 bonus uh, your 200 damage combo would actually do 214 damage all right but they actually made it different now so now the way you calculate the percentage is based on on your skill alone uh, and, and basically the formula is let's say you're using again aquas so that's 35 skill times 0.55 and then you would subtract 12.5 
which means you have a 6.75 bonus damage instead of the 7 damage that we talked about. You know, 6.75, if you have 31 morale instead, it would be... There you go, minus 12.5, and that's 455. So this is actually a nerf to beasts, all right? Uh, you know, everyone's talking about, you know, beasts being, you know, insane and everything. But in the past, if you were going for a 100 damage card on a beast, you would go... Uh, so beasts have 31 skill, right? So that would be 100 times 31 divided by 500, and uh, that would be 6.2... Uh, extra damage to that card as long as you were using two cards. Today, the way it works is you're gonna have to get your 31 times 0, 055 minus 12.5. So instead of that 6 point something bonus, you actually get a 4.55 bonus. And this is a 30% nerf on the bonuses of all of the classes that don't have 35 skill. So reptile, plants, and beasts, they're all going to be doing less damage when they're using a lot of cards, or at least two cards. It is a little bit less than the crit nerf, but you have to remember that skill is going to be more relevant overall than crits are going to be, especially because aquas and uh, plants and uh, these classes are already crit much less. Uh, you know, I think people are overrating the aqua nerfs and maybe underrating the beast nerfs. Time will tell. I'm not saying beasts are worse than they were the last patch because that's really hard. They were already, you know, uh, very mediocre. But uh, I think that skill nerf is definitely worth talking about. And, you know, it's looking really good here for birds and bugs. One thing we have to discuss is actually the intermediary classes, right? Because here it's only the pure breeds. But what about the base stats for everyone else? Well, Dawns and Max, my friends. Oh, oh, oh lord, those guys, they have a lot of skill, okay? They have a lot of skill, and you have to remember, they do not get, uh, like, everyone else, there, there's no cards that give skill, which means that a mech right now is going to be doing 11% uh, bonus damage on all of the skills. We're talking about how much skill beasts have. The difference is actually insane, right? You could say that mechs do like 2.5% more damage when they're using combos compared to beasts. That's it for all of the formulas and calculations. I know this is a little bit boring. I'm sorry if I took too long, but I think it's really worth talking about it. Way more important than the cards, honestly, because the changes to the cards were a little bit underwhelming, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you guys exactly how the table looks like. First of all, Anemone and Hughes in general got no nerfs or very mediocre ones. Anemone only got a 5 reduce shield this is like uh, i'm actually baffled and also a little bit pissed uh they also didn't nerf zigzag at all they buffed mosquito and the reason they did all of that is because they actually buffed scarab now a target cannot be healed for two rounds and this is huge because in general buffing uh an effect is going to be much more pro like much more effective than buffing you know five or ten or twenty damage even in a card uh, because, you know, they literally doubled how many turns Scarab works. And, uh, you know, because they didn't nerf Zigzag, because they didn't enough nerf any of the heals, I feel like this card is going to be insanely useful and probably one of the S tier cards of this patch. It's not necessarily a great card, but in this meta of heals, where they didn't really uh, address the heals that much, I feel like Scarab is just gonna be necessary overall. Now, they actually nerfed Double Talk a lot, and they also nerfed Grass Snakes a lot, because Grass Snakes is one of the few cards where the description also changed, and they, instead of, you know, doubling how they did it with Scarab, they actually um, cut in half the amount of poison stacks they get. They, they did increase the damage and they shoot a little bit, but overall, I think this is a nerf, and probably one of the biggest ones alongside Double Talk. In third place comes our boy Cute Bunny. They took 20 bonus damage, which is small, but you have to remember that usually you have, you know, two or three cute bunnies in a team, which means that uh, the amount of damage you're taking out of the entire team is bigger, right? You have to account for the full damage of a team. Everything else besides that is kind of minor. You know, they did nerf Nemo and Cuckoo, which I think uh, was necessary. Risky Fish also got a little bit of a nerf uh, that ties, you know, pretty well with the overall nerfs to Aquas. And uh, if we're going to talk about buffs, I think Cottontail, one of the huge, huge uh, winners here of this patch, getting 30 shield in a card that used to give 0-0, zero, zero, 
Timber also a pretty big winner in my opinion. Yeah, they, they took 20 of the shield away, but in general having that damage in a beast card to me looks much better. And if you just look at Cotton Tail and Timber, you're already seeing two cards, two beast cards that give 110 damage in a meta where damage got nerfed overall. So I think uh, you know squishier axes are going to thrive a little bit more. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about bugs, when you're talking about Max and Beast, these are all kind of squishier targets. I do feel like we are definitely marching towards a meta where uh, those axes are going to be much, much better. Uh, I'm sorry, another card is Unko. So they, they actually gave it 20 shield. And that is a card. Well, that is a card you don't see used very often. Like, if you look at the other cards that actually go through targets, if you look at Little Owl, if you look at uh, Winghorn, or even um, or even the other one, I forgot the name, they have very low values of damage and shield. But now you have this card that actually has 130, you know, shield plus damage combined and kind of does the same thing. So I'm curious to see how much this card is going to be used because uh, it is looking pretty good. Like in general, shield just got, it feels like shield get, got much more buffs than it got nerfs. Very weird cactus buff, honestly. I, I don't know <laughs> what they were thinking here. I, I really don't understand what the hell is going on. Uh, pretty big buff to Strawberry Shortcake, and the, that, that is another heal card that I was talking about where it really feels like they they kind of want heals and shield to be a bigger part of Axie. And, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. I think, you know, in general, this part was not really, like, the card changes were a little bit less... Uh, uh, important than I thought it was going to be. Oh, there's one extra extra thing I forgot to talk about. This is actually kind of hidden here, because if you just go to the cards, you're going to miss it. They actually talked about uh, s structure rewards. Our season structure rewards you for climbing the ladder board with boosted SOP drops and juicy AXS prices. I think if they're going to increase the amount of SLP given away by, you know, 100%, they would probably tell you how much it is because that would be, you know, pretty much a free advertisement for scholars and older players and even newer players to jump into the Axie ship. Because they didn't say anything, I think it's going to be a minor change, you know, maybe plus 20, plus 15. Uh, regardless, though, it, it, there is a buff, we just don't know exactly how much it is because everyone needs to climb back to their old MMR so we can compare exactly what is going on. Uh, and yeah, this this video ends here guys. This video is actually sponsored by no one because no one wants to sponsor this goddamn channel So this is why sometimes I like to talk about my breeding bot There is a ton of different services that you can use and I think the biggest difference f I think the biggest difference from my bot to everyone else is that people are at people are advertising other services. So when you actually have an advertiser, you are pressured to just say everything that's good, right? Because you just want their money. I made my own bot and uh, we have 500 paying customers already. We have a huge thriving community. And uh, this is, you know, I think our biggest difference maker besides being the most robust and most complete bot, we might not be the prettiest one, but we're definitely the best one. And uh, we are constantly improving. Like we have five features in the pipeline already. We're not gonna stop. We're not here to like honestly make money. I just like Axie. I made the bot to myself. And one time I showed it on YouTube and people were like, oh, maybe you should, you should sell this. And that's what I'm doing. Um, with the new patch being down and now more ideas being laid out about what should be good to breed, what should be good to PVP, I think my bot could be of use to you. So if you enjoyed all of the content that I put out up to this point and the fact that I actually am remaking this video, uh, I would appreciate if you could give a like and subscribe and uh, maybe you just want to join our community. After that, who knows, maybe our bot just uh, looks like uh, a really good deal to you as well. Thank you so much and have a good one.